Welcome to this introduction to interactive fiction, provided by the Fantails project. Here's how we define interactive fiction. In its most basic form, it is a type of story with which the reader can interact. The text will change in response to the reader's decisions. Typically, interactive fiction is non-linear. You can compare an interactive story with a forking path in the woods. At a certain point in a series of events, the story can branch. These branches can join up again later, or they may divert into different endings. For example, a character may take a life-changing decision that radically changes the outcome of the story. In this way, two readers can each experience a unique path through the story. A work of interactive fiction isn't necessarily non-linear, but this is often the case. Finally, works of interactive fiction are mainly about text. They can contain images, animations, sound and video, but it's the written text that drives the story forward. As we will see, you can also find interactive stories that are mainly told through video or audio, and the mechanics of interactive fiction are also used in many great games that have a strong narrative focus. But we usually don't call these works interactive fiction. You can find thousands of works of interactive fiction online, often free, and the communities of practice that support the development of interactive fiction stimulate a lot of innovation, both technical and literary. As a result, there is a great variety of interactive fiction. We can look at this variety from two angles. The first angle is the interaction mechanic, the way in which you interact with a story. The second angle is the overall experience you get while engaging with the story. Let's first look at the different types of interaction mechanic. One way in which you can interact is through choices. This mechanic goes back to choose your own adventure game books. In these books, the reader controls the actions of the main character by following links from one page to another. In this way, the choices you make as a reader determine the events in a story and reading becomes an adventure. In choice-based interactive fiction, these links are presented as clickable text. You typically first read a part of the story and are then presented with clickable options that can influence how the story unfolds. For example, you determine what one of the characters will do or say. In Hannah Fields, you read about dark feelings that have taken control of Hannah. You experience the story through the eyes of four people that are important in Hannah's life. In this passage, you decide what Christine, Hannah's boss, says to Hannah. You need to consider the dialogue options carefully, because each option may have a different effect on Hannah's emotions. We call Christine the player character, as the reader role plays her part in the story. Hannah is the main character in the story, but the reader cannot control her actions, so we call her a non-player character. The mechanics of choice-based interactive fiction are also used in interactive film. In this medium, you are presented with clickable text or images at the end of a passage. Each of the links can take you on a different path. In the educational interactive film Attentat 1942, you are the grandchild of Ludmila Yelinkova and discover how she lived through the Second World War in Prague by asking her questions and playing detective minigames. The 2018 Netflix production Black Mirror Bandersnatch popularized the medium of interactive film. And next to interactive film, you can find the choice-based mechanic in interactive audiobooks, sometimes called spoken interactive fiction. Mayday Deep Space tells the story of a lone survivor on a damaged spaceship that has been occupied by attackers. You communicate with the main character through a walkie-talkie that shows a map of the ship and the location of your partner. He tells you what happens on the ship and you use the buttons on a walkie-talkie or even voice commands to help him out of this life-threatening situation. 
A variation on choice-based interactive fiction is hypertext interactive fiction. The main difference is in the way the text presents itself. As with regular choice-based interactive fiction, you will find options that control the story below the main story text, but you will also find hyperlinks in the story text itself. These links can take you to a new scene or can expand the hyperlink text to uncover hidden information. For example, in this scene you are at McDonald's, waiting to be served. But you're not the only customer. A vampire is standing in the booth next to you. You could set the building on fire or escape to the street, but that's not exactly your style. Perhaps you can find something hidden in the empty booth to defend yourself. Aha! A clove of garlic! That may help! As you can see, hypertext interactive fiction is not fundamentally different from choice-based interactive fiction, but it creates new possibilities for interacting with text. Oh, and be careful! In this type of story, time plays a role, so it often pays to react as quickly as possible. If you don't find the garlic quickly enough, you may be eaten yourself instead of being served. An entirely different way of interacting with text is through a parser. A parser is a piece of technology that will try to make sense of any text that you type. You can compare it to a search engine that analyzes your search text in order to figure out what you're looking for. In this piece of parser-based interactive fiction, written by a fan of Harry Potter, you play a professor at the Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. You can see the introduction to the story, its title, and some instructions on how to get started. A parser-based interactive fiction story is often divided into rooms, locations where you can do something before heading over to other parts of the story. Here we are in the professor's flat. Each room has a description which you will need to read very carefully because it contains clues on what you can do next. And finally, you can see the parser interface, where you can type commands that will control the main character and move the story forward. Commands typically consist of a verb, for instance, look, examine, or take, followed by a noun, contract, bed, or trunk. You also type such commands to travel from one room to another. For example, go south or go north. So, in comparison with choice-based interactive fiction, parser-based interactive fiction doesn't usually have options in the hyperlinks you can click on. Instead, you need to find out what is your next best move by reading the text really closely, by analyzing the game situation well, and by formulating a creative response. You could say that the links and choices are hidden in the descriptions of the scenes. So, in a nutshell, we've seen two types of interaction mechanic. The first one is choice-based and its variation hypertext. The second one is parser-based. Let's now consider the different kinds of experience you can create with interactive fiction. First, interactive fiction can give you the experience of solving a puzzle. Here the focus is less on story and more on problem solving. Interactive fiction designer John Ingold defines a puzzle as any situation or scenario in which a productive next step is not immediately apparent. For example, a closed but unlocked door in a parser game that understands the verb open, that's not a puzzle. By contrast, a closed front door of a house that is locked, of which the key is hidden under the doormat of the garage, guarded by a troll that speaks a different language. That can be a puzzle. A classical work of interactive fiction that contains a lot of puzzles is the parser-based adventure game Zork. Here, many of the puzzles have to do with finding your way through a maze. Works of interactive fiction can also be very much like games, like the award-winning 80 Days. 
This is an anti-colonial retelling of the original story by Jules Verne, Around the World in 80 Days. One of the distinguishing features of games is that they have goals or objectives, and that you can win or lose. In 80 Days, your main objective is, not surprisingly, to travel around the world in 80 days, on a certain budget. If you meet this objective, you win. If not, you lose, but you can still have a lot of fun exploring the story and its world. This objective gives a very concrete purpose to the story that you're reading and the choices that you make in it. Also typical about games is that they have mechanics. For instance, in Super Mario, the world moves from right to left, and you can only move forward, not go back. In 80 days, there are a couple of such mechanics. First, you have an interactive map for planning your travel across the globe. Because there are different routes and means of transportation, which may differ in cost or speed of travel, you need to consider your options carefully. Next, you also have an inventory of carry-on items that you need on your adventure. For instance, when traveling on the Trans-Siberian Railway, you will need warm clothes, but when you're in the Bahamas, you will need to travel a lot more lightly. You can also trade valuable items in the city markets, which will earn you a buck to spend, for instance, on faster travel options. A final mechanic in 80 days is that you are the servant of Monsieur Phileas Fogg, who challenged you to go on this adventure in the first place. It's important that you take good care of him. If you travel in dangerous conditions, his health may go bad. You also need to get along with him well. You travel as a team. Interactive fiction can also emphasize itself as a literary work. As with other pieces of literature, here the focus will be on the characters, their backstory, their motives, the narrative techniques, or the use of figurative language such as metaphor. Finally, interactive fiction can also manifest itself as a dialogue with virtual characters. Some interactive fiction authors like Emily Short put a lot of effort into making their non-player characters believable and interesting by allowing players to interact with these characters in unexpected ways. One example is Galatea, in which you have a conversation with a marble statue. To sum up, we've seen that interactive fiction can deliver different kinds of experiences, from puzzle solving and gaming to literary experiences and interactive dialogues. Now, it's your turn to play.